Elections have a way of making people go a bit crazy, and the presidential election on the 5th of November is about as big as elections get. But what does the election mean for your business? Now tune into this episode where we discuss the impacts of the election on your business and how to set yourself up for success regardless of who wins. Welcome to the Profitable Trading Podcast. Tony Fraser-Jones, your host. Phil Smith, my good mate, co-host. Good right here. How you going? Doing well. Doing, doing good, well. doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we digging into, man? Well, well, well. Tuesday the 5th of November is a pretty big day. It's the presidential election date. Uh, we're basically the most powerful country in the world is going to vote for the most powerful person in the world to lead them, which has a big impact not only if you live in the U.S., but right around the world, so big deal. It is a big deal, and the ripples will flow out everywhere. It's pretty interesting because there's so much talk and anger and fighting and bad blood about uh, who who to vote for, particularly in the news media, mm. uh, who uh, sometimes I wonder about the uh, brain power of some of those people, but anyway. And like the divide between Democrats and, and Republicans is just way wider than ever before. You know, people are moving cities and moving towns because they, they want to be in a, in a place where uh, they don't fit in anymore. Mm. Uh, and there's way less tolerance for, you know, for other views than there ever was, which is, uh, is kind of a bit, but um, that's, that's where we find ourselves. Uh, so, you know, obviously elections and governments, they mean a lot. They, they affect things like tax and compliance costs and, you know, government spending and labor and immigration laws and all that sort of stuff and policy changes and, and just the general economic conditions, you know, like inflation and interest rates, obviously that all plays a part. But the thing is here, that they're, they're all big picture things and I think the way we actually approach it as business owners is actually pretty important. That mm. makes a big difference because if we do this the wrong way, we could, you know, kind of get a bit bent out of shape and, and it's going to have a pretty detrimental effect. So I think that's what we're going to dig in today, how to actually approach it in the most positive way as a business owner so that uh, you get the best result for your business and your life and your family. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you got a story to kick us off. I do have a story uh, about a old couple live on a farm out in the middle of nowhere. Are their names Tony and Bronwyn? No. <laughs> I'm more middle-aged. Right, right. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Appreciate <laughs> that. They're much older than me, more like, you know, as old as my parents. Ah, okay. Yeah, I see, yeah. I see. But they live on a farm and the wife. She's a diehard Democrat, voted Democrat her whole life. Husband, diehard Republican, voted Republican his whole life. Uh, somehow they've stayed married. I don't know how. Yeah, that's the real mystery here. That's the real mystery. That's a whole other story. But they vote opposite. And so uh, every time there's an election, they agree that they're not going to vote because there's no point because they just cancel each other out. But every time there's an election, funnily enough, husband is always working very close in the barn next to the house. Right. Because he doesn't want the wife to sneak off and vote. Yeah, he's keeping an eye. He's keeping an eye every year because um, he doesn't want no vote cast when he doesn't get to vote because uh, it's happened before she's tried. Yeah. Little does he know that she's also peering out the window making sure he's still in the barn. That's exactly right. That he hasn't right. jumped in the truck to, to run down to the... That's exactly yeah. right. Moral of the story is elections do funny things to normal people. Yeah. Uh, and, and I see this stuff happening right now as well. So um, it's a pretty interesting time. Yeah, definitely. And I think if we have the wrong attitude to elections, yeah, we can definitely run into some problems. Well, we do. We lose focus on actually what's important with our goals. Like We get so caught up in all the stuff that's going on. It's pretty hard not to at the moment because the media are just like retarded. Uh, it's not news media anymore. It's not back in the day when Walter Cronkite read the news. It was actually like the news. Yeah. Now it's just like opinions. Yeah. 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 And I'll probably declare my biases here a little bit, but a lot of them are pretty liberal and left-leaning opinions as well. Uh, some people hate me, I don't care, but whatever. Hey, elections are doing funny things to you. That's man. right. And the thing is, most people won't change their minds anyway. You could argue with them, it's like no, a waste right. of time. They, they, you just waste hours and energy you know, going down a rabbit hole with them. And you can get really frustrated and frankly pissed off with what you see in the media. And that's happened to me in elections before. Kind of get bent out of shape. What a waste of time. So I you know, sometimes just give up watching. Mm. And you get stressed out and frustrated, and you know people sometimes just give up when it doesn't go their way. They're like, "Oh, the world's ended if if the election doesn't go their way." And some people are feeling like that, you know, on the fifth of November at the moment. Like, I'm going to get out of Dodge because it doesn't go my way. This is uh, this is not good. So it does mess people up, and there's a lot of chat about it. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, though, if, you know, if we look at things a little differently, you know, there are opportunities. Yeah, here. yeah. Well, the, the key thing is stay focused on your goals and uh, spend energy on your life and your business rather than a whole bunch of stuff that that's out there. And you'll keep a clear headspace. You talk about it with people, but you can just carry on regardless of the outcome. You're not kind of going to die in a ditch over, you know, whether it goes one way or the other. Uh, it does have an impact, obviously, but it's not actually a lot you can do about it. Yeah, and that's absolutely. probably the key thing. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the thing is that we can end up spending so much time worrying about it, but there's actually not that much of anything that you can do about the outcome. I mean, you can vote, sure. And you should vote. And you should vote. You absolutely should. But then after you've done that, that's what you can do. And so there's, there's your action taken. I mean, after that, the outcome is the outcome. And even if your candidate wins, who knows how much of their policies are actually even going to get actioned? I mean, like, there's a whole, and there's the House, there's the Senate, you know, there's so many different voices involved with anything getting across the line that it's like, you know, even if your party wins, everything they promise, you know, how much of that's even going to be reality? There's state laws and federal laws. There's a whole, so many layers to this thing that you don't really know. Uh, Yeah. and, And even if you... You want to get active in the whole politics thing and stuff. You do that, knock yourself out. That's awesome. Get involved in the community. But there's only so much impact you can have in past that. It's probably not really worth getting stressed out about. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is like everybody, you know, as, as a collective, it's lots of people's own individual small part that makes a difference as a collective. But you can only do your small part. You know, it, it does still rely on everybody else. And so, and, and then again, once the, once the government's actually formed, then each person in the government is their own small part of, of the overall voice and what actually gets happened, you know, gets crossed the line. So I think end of the day, even if your preferred candidate becomes the president and, you know, they're in power, the hard thing is that, you know, you don't actually know that life will be that different at all. And often changes in the margins, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, smaller things that happen and that change that actually will have, you know, some significance. But most likely, there's not going to be the big, huge, sweeping changes that are promised in advance. And so, you know, life may actually look pretty damn similar after the election. And, you know, the things that are different are not always predictable beforehand anyway. So, you know, the thing is, you can put way too much stock in the outcome, not knowing at all what that's going to mean for you. It's, it's really tough. Yeah, well, like you said, you can do your vote and maybe do your little bit of support in your area. Uh, and that might make a small difference. But you can't control the outcome of who wins that much. And even, like you said, who who wins, that probably doesn't affect you that much either. There are some changes. But even if they do affect you, there's nothing you can actually do about that change. And I guess that's the point here is that you really have to focus in your business to bring this back to business. Cause it's getting a bit political here, which is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels a bit weird. Anyway, yeah. uh, the, the thing is you've got to focus on what you can control in, in your business. And in anything in your business, in your life, if you you know, stress, anxiety, frustration, anger actually comes from trying to control the things that you can't control. Mm. And so I have a saying is that rather than focusing on the economy, you want to focus on building your own economy. And that's the same here. So don't worry about what's happening out there. Worry about what you could do to build your own economy. And you've got way more power over that than you think. And there's a, a really cool uh, sort of thinking tool that we use here that I think helps, well, helps me with this anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's the traffic light system. So yeah, I love the traffic lights. We use this with permission yeah. from a from a guy called Richard Petrie, and you know he's a really great coach, and he he talks about this traffic light system where basically you've got the three colours: uh, red, amber, and green. Red light is the, the stuff that you just have no control over. Uh, so, example might be I don't know, like what's the actual result of the election? Like you can vote once, but really you have zero control over it. Yeah, I mean, or the weather or other yeah. people's opinions. I mean, again, if you're a Democrat and I'm a Republican, I can't make you a Republican thinker. That's not that's not going to be something I can actually control at all. I mean, it's your thoughts. This is your your personality. There's yeah. nothing I can do about it. Yeah, uh, and then you've got the, the amber, which is like the zone of influence. Uh, and so that's where you can actually maybe have some influence. So, you know, you can maybe control your children to some extent. Well, what I can't do is I can't control the things they do. I can't make them do stuff. They'll do what they do, but I can influence what That's they're right. going to do in the way that I parent them. Uh, and again, with your team, the way that you coach your team, the standards you set, the things that you try to put in place to influence what they do, you can influence, but you can't control. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not standing behind them like a marionette puppet, like you're know, moving their hands for them. I can't control them. They are a person, well, but I can influence the things that they do. That's right. I can see some dads on the side of the sports field trying to do that. But anyway, uh, and, <laughs> and yeah, so like you said, with your team, it's a similar thing, right? Uh, so you have some influence. Uh, and then there is the green zone, which is where you have absolute control. And that typically is what you think and what you do yourself. Yes, the uh, actions you take. The actions you take or the thoughts that you have. Mm. They are the actually the only things you can control. I guess the real thing about this is when you focus on uh, thoughts and activities in the red zone, something you have no control over, it's incredibly stressful because you get angry and frustrated because why aren't they listening? It's not fair. Life's screwing me over. 
you know, this candidate's an idiot. Ah, oh, that's red zone thinking. It just leads to poor negative emotional outcomes. And it's a drain on your energy. Massive it's a drain on your massive energy. Massive waste of time. You yeah. only have so much time and energy, and if you're spending it on red zone, it's a waste. Yeah. And amber zone is like where you think you can influence. This is the seductive zone. This mm. is where you think you can control things, but you actually can't. So here would be like if you're on social media arguing with people about their political views, you think you can influence them. You can't. Or maybe mm. you can to the smallest extent. Mm. And that causes so much stress. I find this with our kids, you know, like they get older, I'm trying to control what they do for homework or the activities they do. And I've learned that I try and do that. It just makes me feel terrible and actually damage the relationship. So Amber stuff is really seductive, but you've got to be really careful because if you're trying to influence the outcome of things, the election or what people are deciding, it's really tough. Well, I was just going to say that the pull, I think the really difficult thing is between green and, and Amber is that yeah. in green, what you can often control is you can control actions and behaviors but what you can influence is still outcomes and at yep. the end of the day we want outcomes and that's why amber can be so seductive is because there's outcomes we want and we can even influence those outcomes which leads us to think that we are controlling those outcomes right. but we're not we're only influencing them and so it can just be so seductive because you think you're getting somewhere but the only thing you can actually control is is in that green zone which is which is the next one yeah which is the thoughts and the actions that you take and mm. that's that's the really key thing uh, and so you want to put your effort in the in the green zone because that's something that you can actually can control and you're going to feel good about, you know, I did what I said I would do. Mm. Uh, I've got control of my thinking. I'm being positive. I'm taking the actions that I can take. So an example there, you know, the government and the president changes. Maybe there's some changes in, in, in immigration. Oh, there's not as many people that, that are available to work now. Okay, that's red zone. I can't, no point getting stressed about that. Mm. Amber zone would be, well, I can market and try and get great job ad out there. But that that may or may not give me the result. Green zone is I can write a new job ad and put it out there or I can contact the, you know, the people uh, who, who might be able to refer people or, or know people in the community. I can contact them. That's green zone thinking. I can tweak up my marketing to demonstrate that I'm an employer of choice, so yeah. I stand head and shoulders above all the other people that are fighting for the now limited pool of talent. You know, I mean, like again, there's things that you can do which are green that you can spend your time and energy on, rather than wasting it on being pissed off about the external problem that that's, you can't even touch. Yeah. I mean, and it, that's it, the key, right? Yeah, I mean, again, like let's say, all well, the the economy is is struggling now due to you know whoever gets into power. You know, this problem or that problem, this change, that change. And so now there's, you know, less work around. The government spending's tightened yep. up and that's, you know, hurting my workflow. It's like, all right, cool. But like that's something you can't control. What you can influence is, well, there's probably some stuff you can do to get more work. But what you can really control is the actions you take towards that outcome, which are, you know, I'm going to, you know, shake up my marketing. I'm going to try some other avenues. I'm going to tweak the copy in my ads. I'm going to, you know, target a different niche. I'm going to, you know, whatever it might be. There'll be strategies that you can put in place. I'm going to do some proactive marketing rather than just relying on word of mouth. Absolutely. I'm going to fight hard for every bid or quote uh, that I send through. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to follow up everything. Yeah. I'm going to ask for feedback. I'm going to, you know, do all that relationship building stuff that perhaps I wasn't doing. And that's really the key here is if you are frustrated about what's happening or, you're getting bent out of shape about who's going to win. Uh, okay, you can do that. But really, if you want a great business, you've got to focus on those green zone activities that are actually going to put you in a, a good state emotionally to take the actions you need to move yourself forward. Otherwise, you're like, oh, life sucks and it's all happening to me and it's not fair. Yeah. And that's not the attitude of the, the business owners who win. No, nah, absolutely not. You'll notice the ones that win, they win in any economy, any conditions. You know, I always love what Trevor Hendy said where he says the conditions are always perfect. Yeah. Um, you just got to adapt to them, right? And I think that's that's really the key. So should we land this plane? Let's do it. If you're worried about the election and how it will affect your business and your life, it's time to stop focusing on all the noise that is out there and refocus your thoughts and efforts on creating your own economy and on the thoughts and actions that you can take. That's what the winners do, and that's what the happy do. Thanks, heaps for listening. We'll catch you all again next time. See you later. Congratulations on being part of a select group of savvy business owners who are taking their businesses to the next level. And to help you on your journey, don't forget to check out our show notes for a copy of our free book, The Profitable Trady, and other valuable resources. Thanks for being a part of this special group, and we'll see you in the next episode of The Profitable Trady Podcast.